12 months ago we mourned the passing of one of our great colleagues, our greatest colleague, Peter Harvey, but also marvelled as we looked back at his career, at the amazing moments he witnessed and the way he brought those stories to us and to you. His death from pancreatic cancer has inspired his daughter, Claire, to be an ambassador for research into that disease. And Claire is with us today. But first, a look back at her dad's life. Good evening. I'm Peter Harvey. There are secret service men listening. There are 12 more of these tombs. There was a great deal of innuendo. There was a great deal of suggestion. And so the night ends for Prime Minister Hall. The job of a reporter is to be in the wrong place at the right time to tell the hardest stories. In China. In Jordan. Tokyo. In Paris. In Moscow. The Philippines. In northeastern Chad. And Peter always found the humanity behind that hardship, whether it was overseas... And these are certainly not the best of times. ..or on home soil. Not so long ago, a river raged through here, bank to bank. Nothing was beyond him or beneath him. He covered the turmoil of politics like the Whitlam dismissal. Well, may we say... I was standing below him, holding my cameraman's back. Uh, they were shooting up. And what do you remember of the atmosphere and the mood? And oh, it was electric, absolutely electric. Yet he also had an insatiable sense of storytelling, finding the little gems in life. By the way, would somebody please phone home and let them know where I am? He was part of our daily life because he stayed true to the reporter's code. The best attribute of a reporter, and the greatest attribute of all, is curiosity. Peter had a bedrock faith. You've got a strong faith, haven't you? Something I didn't realise. Yeah, no, I, I, I believe very strongly in uh, the classical God and Jesus Christ. I don't need to go to church, but I do need to pray. Uh, it helps. Believe me, it helps. As well, he had a determination when diagnosed with pancreatic cancer not to give up. It, it's, it'd be so easy just to fall back into uh, a bed and say, oh, well, no, that's it, history, pancreatic cancer is very difficult to cure. Uh, why should I even bother? Well, why I should even bother is because I enjoy life. Uh, I, I don't want worries about my tomorrows to destroy all my todays. As we reported a year ago, Peter's own story, battling cancer, was not to have a happy ending. Unless you count the close love and fond memories held by his family and friends. joins us now along with Caroline Kelly, director and co-founder of the Avna Namani Pancreatic Cancer Foundation. Um, well, just seeing that reminds me of what a hole there is in the news every night. Your dad touched so many people. Um, how, how's the family getting on? Oh, good. I mean, you know, bizarrely enough, it's been a, a year full of joy. Uh, although I'm now very <laughs> yeah, sad. <laughs> we didn't <laughs> plan that out right, did we? We should have played it after. No, that's right. I a year have... full of joy. Yeah, well, we've had two babies. So I've got a baby. My, my son, Reg, is six months old. And my brother and his wife have a beautiful baby called Sean, who's three months old now. So in the midst of all our grief, we're surrounded by babies farting and throwing up and giggling and rolling on the floor and it's, it's hard to um, focus on your own sadness when you've got two completely self-absorbed little beings who couldn't care less um, to, to absorb all your attention. Yeah. And Caroline, your life was obviously touched by pancreatic cancer and you started the foundation. Tell us about your, your journey with this disease. Um, my husband, Avner, died of pancreatic cancer five years ago, uh, 13 months after he was diagnosed. Um, so we set up the foundation really to give people hope. We wanted to see um, outcomes change for future patients and uh, our vision is to double the number of survivors by 2020 and we're hopeful of achieving that. Because we have of course seen um, with breast ca cancer research and funding 
great inroads being made so um, it, there is hope isn't there, there as long there, as you get the interest in the funds yeah there is hope um, the statistics have changed over the years for breast cancers breast cancer and for other cancers so we know with investment it can change for pancreatic cancer and Australia actually leads the world in pancreatic cancer research so it's you know it is hopeful but it needs lots of funding and that's one of the big issues with it. Caroline's foundation's already raised four million dollars um, oh, you know, since Adam's death you. which is absolutely remarkable and and all of that money goes to research. Um, but they... you, you know as a family member you must have um, you must have felt your heart just drop when you heard pancreatic cancer? Yeah, I, I think uh, it, it's, it's like, like a lot of people, I knew about it as the cancer that had killed Steve Jobs and uh, Patrick Swayze. And uh, we all remember the, the horrifying pictures of them so thin before they died and so clearly unwell. So I think one of the problems with pancreatic cancer is, as Caroline's husband once said, we die too quickly. Um, the, 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 often I think families are absorbed with the struggle for the first, the months that, that the person is, is ill um, uh, and it can seem really pointless but the whole point of Caroline's foundation and I think that we're trying to get across is that, that it is possible to be hopeful and it's only by being hopeful that we can raise the money to do the research to uh, improve the survival rate. Is there good research being done here in Australia? Yes, Australia leads the world in this research. Um, the um, Garvin Institute uh, are partnered with the University of Queensland and they lead the way in this uh, genomic research. So it is very hopeful. Unfortunately, their funding dries up in uh, the middle of this year. So we're going to help as much as we can, but we can't do it alone. And we hope the government can find a way of stepping in and not letting this world-leading research go to waste. Yeah, uh, Peter would have been a great spokesman for um, the the cause. He would have. He would have. The, the, the Avnus Foundation run walks every um, every year in various cities, and I, I can imagine Dad, you know, charging forth, leading the way. As long as all the cameras were on him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he would have loved it. Yeah. Um, so uh, that. And the, they would have been. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, he would have made sure about that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, you're doing great work in his stead and um, how can we help? Go to the website? Go on to the website and there's a Deep Spring Avner's Water on sale at Woolworths. We get 10 cents from each sale of those and Masters Home Improvement have an Avner's Hope Bros on sale as well as um, Muck uh, Hair Care Products. Uh, we're getting donations from them. I just make a donation on the website. It, it all helps. And, we're very grateful for the support across Australia. It's been fabulous. Well, congratulations, $4 million. That's a great start. And um, let's charge ahead and double it, triple it. Let's <laughs> more. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.